In this video, I'm going to walk you through all the steps to drywalling a room. Okay, so drywalling in an old house is so different than drywalling in a new house. All right, new construction tends to be much more plumb, and so when you start to drywall in a house like this, you're going to have to operate with some variations. So for example, I'm going to cut this 4x10 piece, which is going to go into the ceiling, and I have to actually cut it at an angle to fit the wall, okay? And to do that, I'm actually going to start off at 43 and a half, and I'm going to have to gain a whole inch going to 44 and a half on the way across it. Now I'm using the 4x10 on the ceiling so I can cut my taping down. It's going to make getting the drywall up there a lot trickier because I'm going to have almost no room to maneuver, but in the long run, this little extra work is going to make a huge difference, okay? So to cut a piece this long, this long straight edge here that I happen to have, uh, you could use a one by that you know is straight, or you could just you know, do it in sections. I'm pretty lucky that I actually have this device, so I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna measure my corners. Now, if you're doing the ceiling, you have to have spatial reasoning that is good. There are some methods that you can use that other people talk about, like trying to figure out how to balance and lay everything out. I just sit and think about it, and I measure two or three times, and I visualize the way I'm gonna put it up. Remember, the white side goes facing out, and so you have to inverse everything when you go to put it onto the drywall lift, okay? So um, I'm gonna start getting it measured, get it up, and then I'll talk about how we cut it. Okay, so cutting a piece this big <clears throat> is a little tricky, and there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I can't stand this up because my ceilings are 10 feet tall. So I'm gonna have to do it this way. Some people will lay it out on sawhorses, um, I'm just going to do it here and just be a little extra careful. Now, I went ahead and marked this with a pencil just to make myself feel a little bit better. But I'm going to come over here now. Uh, you can see that I actually used, I don't know if you actually can see it or not, but I used a clamp down here to hold this other piece up. That's a little trick you can do when you're working by yourself is to use a clamp. Uh, now, just one of these uh, quick grips that are just one of the most handy tools I've ever had. So... To cut drywall, and you'll see me do this a lot, um, you need to just score the paper. I always run twice, especially if my blade's a little dull. You want a sharp blade, just like when you're cutting the end insulation. You want a uh, sharp as blade as possible. So I want to make sure that this stays in place. I'll mark this here, and I'm going to just start to cut. I made a couple passes on each one and so now I'm just going to go ahead and make a couple passes to finish this off. I have this scored now so what do you do especially on a piece this big you want to be a little extra careful I put one hand on the back side below the dry, below the score, and then with the top, I just pop it, fold this down, depending on how you did, and then now uh, some of the purists will tell you different ways to do it. You can come from the back side and just score it through, but since that's a little more complicated here, I'm just going to take my knife, run it in between the gap, especially if I got a nice clean... Uh, mark here all right believe it or not this piece is cut the long way now I got to check the short way to see if it's exactly 10 feet it was close before I think I need to maybe take an inch off so I'll do that next when measuring by myself, sometimes I'll actually like to take two measurements for every single one. So I measure from one point, mark it, measure from the other side, mark it, and then add those together. So I have about a quarter of an inch difference between the lengths from one side to another. Now I have a little bit of wiggle room since, the, since you do the ceiling first typically when you're drywalling, and then you do the sides. And this is half inch drywall, so you have a little less than an inch worth of wiggle room, but you don't want to push that too far. So I have nine feet, nine inches going across on one side, on one length and nine and nine and a quarter 
going on the other. Okay, so that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room. Now, I don't want to cut this precisely because then getting it up there is going to be a nightmare. So I'm going to cut it just a little bit short to make that a little bit easier. And uh, then we'll uh, get this going. So it's nine feet, nine inches. So I'm going to cut it about a little bit less than that. And I'm going to go nine feet, uh, about eight and three quarters to a half. Okay. And that'll give me a little extra space uh, to jam this thing up there. Because again, this is going to be a little bit harder doing it this way, but it'll save me a lot of time in taping later. So I'd rather have the work more up front because I am by far, I'm by no means a professional taper. I actually have found in my time with drywalling that cutting these short edges off here tend to be a little bit trickier. They seem to be a little more finicky, so I tend to do maybe an, I do an extra pass when I do that. You do this the exact same way as you did before. Come here, apply pressure if you can with your knee. All right, line everything up. Some people like to make a pencil mark on these first. I typically do, but um, you know it's it's not even a full. Uh, sheet here. Make sure your knee is not in the way. I think I said three passes, so I don't want you guys to think that I'm a liar. All right, I'm gonna come here, take the same approach, I'm gonna pop this off with my hand. And if I could reach back here to score from the back side. I would, but again, these, you know, in, in, in old construction houses, there are just a couple extra challenges that you don't face in new construction. So, pop this off to the side. I have my first piece of drywall completely cut, and now it's going to be time to put it onto the drywall lift and see how it goes. So, what we want to do is we want to bring this around here because you want to hang the drywall from here. Now this room is so tight and this drywall is going to be so close that I want to have this thing as close to perfect as I can. There's actually a switch right here that you can put on here and set this down and then you can come and pick the drywall up and you'll be able to move it around. Now that sounds great and it is in most scenarios, but this one's a little extra tricky because the room is so tight. So we're going to just try our best and we'll probably bang some things in here and I probably didn't clear out as much as I should have, but that's all right. So here we go. On a side note, when you're lifting heavy pieces of drywall like this by yourself, always watch your back. These are four by tens and they're pretty heavy. So make sure you lift with your knees. All right. I got the drywall on here. Now attempting to maneuver just a little bit. Now I'm gonna to go to the other side here and I'm gonna crank this up a little bit higher so I can move it around this section here, okay? I should be able to drop this into place here. And this is when the trickiness comes in a little bit. Now things are gonna get pretty tight. So maneuvering large sheets of drywall across a uh, very small room, and especially when you're trying to do it in a way that uh, everything will fit in snugly and you can cut down on your taping later, can be pretty tricky. So it's a lot of trial and error, as you can see here. I've had to lean up against things, apply pressure, uh, use my lose a little more body weight than I wanted to. All in all, the piece ended up going up there pretty smoothly, and it's although it's a lot harder now, it's going to end up saving me a lot of time using one piece. Uh, instead of trying to tape one extra butt joint. Woo! All right, first piece of drywall is actually up here. Now I got to put some screws in. I'll talk a little more specifically about the process for putting screws in, but I have just a basic thing, drywall screws, okay? That will uh, work their way in. These are... Uh, one and five eighths, pretty common size. You can get them anywhere. And uh, this is now ready to be installed. I'm looking good. I'm not gonna install all of them right now. I'm gonna put enough screws in here to hold it up. And then I'll come back through 
and really crank it out. So, all right, here we go. So now that I have it up there, I'm gonna go ahead and mark up where I want my, uh, where my studs are and where I'm gonna screw in. This first piece is always a nightmare getting up, but uh, well, it is for me at least. But we got, I got it up and I'm real happy with how it turned out. And uh, I'm gonna start marking and then I'm gonna put enough screws in here to hold it up so I can get on the other piece because I only have this drywall uh, lift for one day. All right, here we go. Now, when you're putting up a ceiling, you need to put screws in every 12 inches or four, five for each uh, four foot section. So I put a lot of drywall screws in the ceiling, especially here since I can't glue. I want to show you guys how to put a drywall screw in properly. Now I'm using an impact drill, Milwaukee one, that it allows me to set the depth of the screw, which is really, really important. So I have a line here marking where my stud is, and I'm going to go ahead and drill in. And now when I get close, what I want to do, I want the screw to go deep enough that it will indent the paper, and when I run my finger or a piece of metal over it, I won't be able to hear it. So right there I'm very close and the way you can check is by taking a uh, mutter and if you hear a change there you'll know that you may need to go a little bit deeper so I'll make it go a hair deeper okay and this is set perfectly this is going to be perfect for that all right now if I were to go deeper and I'll just do it on this one if I were to go if I were to go deeper here, I have now I have now broken through and I've ripped through the paper, okay? And in doing that, I have there is no structural strength here anymore. So when I do it, I always want to bring it to like this one right here, which is perfectly embedded. Now you can see here, this one up here, you run this over it. You can hear that this one is not embedded all the way, okay? So before I tape this, I need to go through and I'll run this over every one to see which ones, uh, if I need to bring any uh, a little bit deeper. And there you go. And so we'll go through all of these and make sure that the uh, depth is correct on these. So when you put tape over them later, uh, it'll work out really well, all right? Now, the other thing that can happen is if you miss the stud, okay, which can happen. But if you miss the stud, you'll see that this thing will just spin here and it's not attached or doing anything and you can't get it in there all the way, all right? All right, and when that happens, not a big deal. Just go ahead and back the screw out, remove it, and you'll patch this um, when you go to put all the screw holes in. So again, if you miss the stud, it will just spin with no resistance. If you go too far in, if you go too far in, you'll actually rip through the paper and there's no structural strength there. So you want it to be set in there perfect, just like uh, this one up here. Okay, so the next part is to put a full piece of four by 10 up here and I'll trim down a little bit. But the tricky part about this is I actually have a, I have a light box up here that I need to cut around. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from two known points and then I have a template here that I'm gonna go ahead and cut out and uh, get that all figured out. So I'm following the same process basically as I did for the first piece of drywall. The nice thing was is that these actually lined up very well so I could just use the full four foot piece instead of trimming it down. This was a huge time saver. Now I tried to record uh, when I actually cut the hole in for the uh, light up top, but I must not have hit the record button. So you can see this one went up a little bit easier. The second one typically does. And again, I just go through the process of adding these screws in. Now I did use a little bit of a bigger screw on the ceiling. Typically on walls, you can get away with a one and a half inch screw. Uh, I went a little bit bigger on some of them, going to two inches just to make sure that I could get into the stud all the way as possible. This third piece was a nightmare to get on. It was a very tricky, but we ended up getting it up there and putting all the screws in and it can't, it's gonna stay up there forever. Now, when I go to the walls, it's basically the exact same process again. As you can see, I'm using a four by 10 on this wall, just again to cut down on the butt joints, which is gonna save me a ton of time here. And you can go every uh, 16 inches on these, so four screws for every four foot piece of drywall. This bottom one went in pretty easily, and uh, I had to. You can see I could cut out the uh, hole for the outlet, 
and for the ductwork. Because of my time constraints, because this is just a side project for me, I could only get those first five pieces up in one day. The second day of drywalling just went so much smoother. I got so much more done than I did in the first day. I was a little rusty on drywall since I hadn't done it in a while. And you can see here that I'm kind of bouncing on different sides of the walls as it goes along, mostly because I had all the drywall positioned in one spot in the room and I couldn't physically move it from one place to another real easily working by myself. And so you can see here I'm just going through and adding in the screws. One of the things that I do is I just want to get the drywall up as quick as possible. So sometimes I don't go ahead and put all the screws in at once. I just get it hung up there and then I'm ready to go. You can see these yellow little tabs here that I have. These are very useful when you're working by yourself. They can hold the drywall up there for you and they allow you to uh, take a little bit of the pressure off. Um, so here I'm doing the uh, smaller pieces for inside there. Again, just making sure that I'm putting enough drywall screws in everywhere it needs to go. This bottom piece turned out to be a little tricky because the walls weren't plumb, so it actually took me a couple of tries to get it in there. And I had to scrape down one edge so I could fit the piece in there. Eventually we got it in there after a couple of tries, and uh, it turned out real well. You can see the hole here. This is an access for a bathroom that's next door. Then it will finish up the closet here and uh, make sure that all the drywall can fit, cleaning everything out. And then after these two pieces go up, the closet is officially drywalled. Now you can see here I'm cutting from the back, which I know a lot of people don't like, but sometimes when the small rooms and everything gets crowded with all your tools, there's not much you can really do about it. Um, and again, this is a process that took me a couple of days. This was a pretty fun piece right here to do because there were so many different angles and points of cut, uh, to add it in with the outlet and the window there as well. And then this will be the last part, last piece on uh, this side of the wall. And it went in pretty smoothly, actually. I was real happy with how this wall turned out. And I think taping it's going to be a lot easier because I took a little extra time. A couple of small pieces to put up to finish up the uh, east wall here. Sometimes these smaller pieces can be a little bit trickier than the bigger ones just because you're trying to be perfect with how finicky you're, you're putting them in there and uh, it ends up always being a little bit more complicated than you thought. Here you can see that uh, I'm putting up these pieces of drywall to finish off the room. And again these are all small and a little more complicated and because I don't like taping and I'm a little concerned about the quality of the work I'm making the drywall cuts a lot more complicated but I think and again it will save me some time. Thanks for watching the video and please subscribe.